Welcome back guys. We are going to do sea glass today in order to learn two techniques, wet on wet and glazing. So I am going to start with some of these rocks that you see that are uh, beneath the other ones. I kind of have pictures of this is stacked on one another. Starting maybe with this one here. So I have a little puddle that I made. And the first thing, since I wanted to teach you guys wet on wet, is I'm gonna wet this rock. And then I take my pale color, and this is called dropping in the color. So because this area is wet, as soon as I touch it, you see how it kind of disperses? Okay, and you're basically, I'm just pushing it around with my brush. And I'm gonna keep my paintbrush within the borders of this rock. So I can make the color a little darker on the areas that you're actually, that peek out from under these rocks, which would be the lip here. Go with this one. Do sap green again. Dropping in my color. Then this. Drop in your color. So, I am going to wet this rock here that's underneath this one while I'm waiting for these other rocks to dry. So, just wet my rock. And once I drop the color in, it's actually so much fun to play around and push the pigment all over the place with your brush. And that is all I'm doing. All right, so we can use a color here. So this rock wasn't dry enough. And I could tell you right now, I think what's gonna happen is called a bloom. Because this area is drying and I dropped in watery color that's pretty wet. And it's, you see how it's bleeding into this dry area? It's going to make what they call a bloom or a back run. I mean, I could fix it now and, you know, um, try to prevent it as much as I can, but I'm gonna leave it go just so you could see what a back run looks like. Plus, I think it's kind of pretty sort of an abstract painting anyway, so I'll go for a few runs here and there. And I'm gonna wet this rock. I'm trying to be careful not to touch the edges of that or we're gonna have another back run. Now I know a lot of people use a hair dryer. You might have seen that to speed up the drying process. And you could definitely do that, but it does affect the color um, of your piece. And it does mute the color when it doesn't dry naturally. Okay, the color gets kind of muted a teeny bit. So I don't know, I like to go do other things between layers. It's kind of fun. Kind of lets your mind reset and think about what you're going to do for the next step. I'm going to cheat here and just put some, just go for it wet on dry for this little guy. 
everything else is kind of touching one another, so I can't really do any other pieces. Okay, I think we could do one more where it's this tiny rock is not going to be touching that rock. It's just a little area. Okay, we're back and it is dry. So the ones that are under the ones on top, I'm going to do next. Let's start with <clears throat> this one here. So the brush I'm using is a round eight. Round brushes are the most popular brushes to use in watercolor, I think. This is a very fun, relaxing project. Makes you think of the beach and relaxing. <laughs> we just need a margarita, folks, or a Corona. The good kind, not the bad kind. The beer kind. All right, so I can't do this one because that is still wet and this would affect that and so would that. So that leads me to doing this rock here. Do this big one next. I kind of want to make the color a little bit more saturated on the edges. Kind of gives it some dimension. Okay, so you could already see the glazing effect, how you can see through the different layers where the green meets the blue, you get this uh, other shade, and with this rock as well. And right here, you can see the differences. You could see the bottom layers in it. That's kind of cool. I'm going to let this dry and do the last rock. I think I want this top rock to kind of be the accent rock or the rock that is the focal point of this composition. So I am going to make it pretty vibrant.
This color is Viridian Hue and it's completely transparent. So I will get a good different variation of colors in here where it crosses over on all these different rocks. And this makes a really cute gift to give to somebody in the summertime for some summer vibe inspiration. So just wanted to show you these little mats I have and how cute of a gift that would make. They sell these on Amazon in all kinds of different sizes. So it's kind of cute. It does come with the, uh, the back piece of this too. So this would be mounted on the solid back piece and then you have a hinge. That's how you mat some pictures using archival tapes. Okay. And then it would just go like that. And it just makes a cute gift. Don't forget to iron your piece of work though. So this is nice and flat before you mat it. 